I'm Dr. Andy Galpin. This is 5 Minute Fizz. We're not wasting any time. Let's jump right into how much fat, protein, and carbs you should eat. Now, we'll start with fat here. Typically, we're going to say somewhere between 20, maybe 30, up to 35% of your total calories should be coming from fat. Now, keep in mind, you've got about 9 calories per gram of fat, which is over twice that of carbs and protein. So when we look at your plate or your serving size, that typically means the amount of fat needs to be about half the amount of protein or fat in terms of on your plate. Now, I've got a separate video showing you that, um, especially if you compare that to like vegetables. So if you have a giant piece of salad or giant salad, it's gonna be huge in physical size because there's almost no calories in it. Where the, the butter or the oil or the you know nuts that you're gonna add are really small in size because they're energy dense, right? So from there, you probably want only about a third or so of your calories that you're eating on fat to come from saturated fat. Now, more recent evidence has shown that if you're above this classic quote unquote 10% number that you can see, it's probably just fine. In fact, that 10% number is maybe not even strongly scientifically justified. That doesn't mean that there's no issues at all with fat and you should have 600 grams of saturated fat a day or anything like that. But it does probably mean if you go a little bit over, you're not gonna get heart disease, especially if you're physically active and otherwise healthy. Healthy. If your weight is under control and you don't um, have obesity or anything like that, then you're probably really doing okay there. If not, you do want to be keeping close tabs on saturated fat, mostly just because that's a lot of calories. And, and we know just being overweight itself is such a massive risk factor for a number of diseases. You don't really need to go out of your way to eat a lot of cholesterol. So that number can be fairly low. But most importantly, if you think about the role of fat in nutrition, it's typically to give you lots of energy. And that's the major benefit of it. It's packed with calories, which is a good thing if we want energy. And so by the same token, I believe it is, it is the easiest macronutrient, or it's one of the, the, the two easiest ones with carbs, to adjust with your goal. So are you training to maximize muscle? Are you trying to lose fat? Are you trying to just have energy throughout the day? Now, I'll give you fair warning. The classes I teach and the athletes I work with are almost always in the sport context. So all these slides you're seeing are not the optimal diet for aging or cancer prevention or somebody who's sitting at a computer all day. I'm generally coming at this from the perspective of you're trying to maintain at least a little bit of physical activity and exercise, or you're trying to be a, a peak high-performing athlete. Something like that, right? Another uh, caveat here to the fat thing, of course, you can go much higher in your fat, especially if you're on like a modified ketogenic diet or a full-blown full -blown ketogenic diet. People can survive and function quite clearly, even lose fat on much higher percentages. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying you can't perform in sports with a higher percentage. I'm simply saying most of the time, most of the athletes I work with are gonna land in this 20 to 30% number or so. Moving on then to carbohydrates. Like I said, the primary purpose of carbs and fat are to be there to produce energy uh, for movement for life. Protein has a different role. And so along with fat, I do believe carbohydrates are the ones you should probably adjust the most when you're changing your physical activity status, whether this means reduction in training, increase in training, different type of training, uh, recovery, etc. cetera, uh, trying to lose weight. And so I like to have the athletes I work with uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of two to seven grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Remember, you got about half the calories per gram in carbohydrates, so the, the volume on your plate can be a lot higher. Uh, most of the time though, five is a pretty good number in terms of grams per kilogram body weight. If you think about somebody who's 70 kilograms, that's 150 pounds, we'll, ju we'll just call it that. If you're eating two grams per kilogram, that's 140 grams of carbs a day. And that's not much. And honestly, I do have athletes that are around that weight range and they do fine on 150 grams of carbs a day, even high performing ones. Some feel terrible on 150 grams. I have others that are in that same weight range and they're like 400 grams of carbs a day and they still will lose weight and be super lean. And so the range is quite significant here. Uh, if you're in the middle of like a crazy endurance event where, you, where you're running you know, seven hours a day or something like that for five or 10 or 15 days straight, you see, you can see people get as high as 15 grams per kilogram body weight, which is crazy. We start talking kilograms of total carbs a day. But those are pretty abnormal, right? So for the most of us, we're gonna land in this range I have listed here. Now we don't exactly know why, but for some reason, females seem to need a little more carbohydrate than, than men. Uh, we have some hypotheses, but it seems to be pretty true whether or not we understand why uh, or not. In terms of added sugar, you want about less than 10 or so percent of your total amount of carbohydrates coming from added sugar. Now, please go watch some of my other videos on what sugar really is. 
before you jump to conclusions here, because most of you think either sugar's awful for you or you don't understand what sugar is, and so you do things like avoid fruits and vegetables. That's not what we're talking about. When I say less than 10%, I mean added sugar. I don't really use it at all personally, and I use it pretty sparingly with even with athletes, but I will use it uh, to its advantage when I need with an athlete. So uh, fruits are fine. All that stuff is different. Those count as carbohydrates. They don't count as added sugar. And then, like I said, uh, carbohydrates are the one we will adjust pretty rapidly and pretty easily when we have a change in physical activity, different part of our season, before fight, after fight, competition, etc. So that being said, we can round out things by talking about protein. You can see the different numbers here based on kind of uh, different training goals and populations. But really, if you just put everybody at 1.5 grams per kilogram per day, they're probably just fine. If you like the pounds version, it's about a gram protein per pound of body weight or a little bit less. So that 70 kilogram person at 1.5 would be in the neighborhood of 110 grams of protein per day. You can go a little bit higher. Now, honestly, I don't, I don't count too much. And if you're wondering where to go, I typically recommend go higher um, rather than lower. Okay, you can get away with a lot. Now, I have separate videos on all three of these macronutrients. So if you want 25 minutes of just protein or carbs or fat, you can go watch those videos. If you want more detail about types of carbs and types of fat and things like that, all those are available in those other videos. Oh, lastly here with our protein, you probably want somewhere in the neighborhood of about 0.4 grams per kilogram of protein per feeding, right? And that'll get you to your total numbers. I wanna leave here on just a little bit of a teaser. So you can see that I'm actually a fan and I've been kind of alluding to this the entire time of modifying and manipulating our protein and carbs and, and fats, depending on what we're going after, what our training goal is, et cetera. And so this is a really important concept that I'm making a video for right after this called periodized nutrition. So go check that out if you wanna hear more about how we do this. There's a lot of ways to go about it uh, and I'll explain those in that video. But for now, hopefully this helped. Share it with your friends and we'll see you next time.